welcome to our webinar entitled Guidelines in Filing Tax Returns, Its Attachments, and Payment of Taxes. I am Attorney Arnold A. Abdua, and I will be glad to share my knowledge and experience regarding taxation to our fellow participants and viewers today. But before we proceed with the topic, I would like you to point your camera to the QR code in front of you. I know that taxation is a very interesting subject. It may not be that easy, and I believe it's better for us to learn it together. So I would like you to send any questions, clarifications, or comments regarding our topic through the contact details that you got. You can also send your request for any tax topic that you would like me to discuss aside from the topic that I have prepared for you. So let us now proceed. Again, what we will discuss is the filing of tax returns, its attachments, and payment of taxes. Alam naman natin that the deadline for filing the 2020 income tax return for individuals and corporations will be generally on April 15, 2021. But, attorney, bakit generally? Well, because there are times a corporation may use fiscal year, where the deadline for filing the income tax return will be on the 15th day of the fourth month following the close of the taxpayer's fiscal year. And there are still some taxpayers who may have concerns on how to comply with existing BIR rules and regulations regarding tax return filing and payment. And in this webinar, we will discuss all necessary information on how to file those tax returns. Let us remember, CBIR si nagi impose some penalty in case of failure to file and pay the tax return on time, including the wrong mode of filing. Therefore, there is a need to be updated with the BIR rules. Alam naman natin, for every failure in terms of tax compliance, there is penalty imposed by the BIR. To give our viewers an update on how to file income tax returns, the BIR recently issued Revenue Memorandum Circular Number 4-2021. It actually provides a consolidated guidelines on how to file and pay taxes including the tax returns and its attachments. We have already observed in the past that the BIR has been implementing rules and regulations to make tax compliance easier and better para mas madaling magbayad at matuwa yung mga taxpayer. The Train Law and the Ease of Doing Business Act even also aim that our tax system will become simpler, fairer, and more efficient. To give you an idea, the filing and payment of tax returns may be through, first, electronic filing of the tax return, which could be either through EBIR forms or the other one, Electronic Filing and Payment System or the EFPS. But there are also instances that taxpayers will have to use manual filing of tax returns and payment. Let us proceed with the electronic filing of tax returns through EBIR forms. Let us remember, in the past, all taxpayers are required to file the income tax returns manually. Ibig sabihin, you have to get the tax forms from the BIR office, whether income tax return, value-added tax return, or percentage tax return. And pwede mo siyang i-photocopy ng marami. Pero you can also accomplish the tax returns through your own handwriting or through typewriter. But because of the advent of technology, mas napapadali na ang compliance, most especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. It would be easier to use technology in filing the income tax returns. Take note that there are taxpayers who are required to use EBIR forms, and there are also taxpayers who would voluntarily use the EBIR forms. And how they will use the EBIR forms, they have to accomplish the tax returns and file it electronically. But remember, the payment of taxes can be done through the following. First is through the payment over the counter through accredited agent banks under the jurisdiction of the concerned RDO where the taxpayer is registered. Ibig sabihin, you have to ask the Revenue District Office kung ano yung mga accredited agent banks within the RDO's jurisdiction. Kasi kapag outside the RDO's jurisdiction yung payment, pwedeng ma-charge ng wrong venue. Pero remember in 2020, the BIR allowed payments of income tax through any accredited agent bank because of the COVID-19. Of course, all should be careful and avoid traveling because of COVID-19. Kaya the BIR allowed payment anywhere. 
this year, 2021, when the BIR issued this revenue memorandum circular, it says na pay through the accredited agent banks under the jurisdiction of the RDO, where the taxpayer is registered. But let us see if there will be additional rules kasi there are still a lot of companies that are under work from home scheme pa rin and hindi pa nakakabalik sa offices nila. But in case there is no accredited agent bank sa taxpayer's area, ano ang resolution or remedy ng taxpayer? The taxpayer can actually go directly to the BIR RDO where the taxpayer is registered and pay directly to the revenue collection officer. This means you do not need to go to any bank to pay the taxes. And the latest mode of payment na inisyo ni BIR sa EBIR form users is through electronic payment using the facilities of the following. First is through the Development Bank of the Philippines. Second is the Land Bank of the Philippines. There is also payment through Union Bank online web and mobile payment facility. And last is through mobile payment through GCash and Paymaya. Take note na very convenient in using these facilities. It reduces yung time, transportation, cost, and effort in going to banks and pay over the counter. You just have to access it online and even through your mobile phone. And those taxpayers na gusto mag-avail ng electronic payment or e-pay, may access the BR website or directly accessing the accredited agent bank's links such as the following. Pero yung mga taxpayers na gusto mag-avail ng mobile payment either through GCash or Paymaya, kailangan nila i-download and install the application before they can proceed with the payment. And if a taxpayer is a holder of BankNet ATM card, the said taxpayer may also pay using their ATM. They just have to register their account with BankNet to avail their bank's online payment facility. Take note that only the following banks are covered by BankNet facility in paying the taxes. We have Asian United Bank, BPI Direct Banco, CTBC Bank, City State Savings Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, Enterprise Bank, Entrepreneur Bank, Equicom Savings Bank, Mass Spec. Philippine Bank of Communications, Philippine Veterans Bank, Filtras Bank, Sterling Bank of Asia, Sun Savings Bank, and Chaong Bank. But as you pay using the BankNet ATM card facilities, remember that you shall bear any convenience fee charged by the banks and or mobile companies. It is not the BIR who will shoulder the convenience fee. And who are the taxpayers that are required to use EBIR forms? Take note. The EBIR forms is a different facility from Electronic Filing and Payment System or the EFPS, which we will discuss later. Going back, taxpayers that are required to use the EBIR forms are the following. First are the top withholding agents. Ano ba yung mga top withholding agents? They are usually published in newspapers in general circulation, but the BIR also notifies them individually. Also, we have accredited tax agents and practitioners and all its clients and taxpayers. We also have accredited printers of principal and supplemental receipts or invoices. And the one-time transaction taxpayers who are classified as real estate dealers, developers, and those who are considered as habitually engaged in the sale of real property who are using or filing BIR form number 2000 OT and the regular taxpayers covered by EBIR forms. Also, those taxpayers that are filing no payment return should use EBIR forms. In the past, kapag no payment, you still have to go to the BIR and physically file the tax return. But obviously, mas malaki pa yung cost ng pagpunta sa BIR kesa sa pagpa-file ng no payment return. Also, we have the government-owned or controlled corporations and local government units that are required to use EBIR forms, but it does not include barangay. Required then mag-file through EBIR forms ang mga cooperatives and also those registered with National Electrification Administration and Local Water Utilities Administration. Let us now proceed with the other mode of electronic filing which is the Electronic Filing and Payment System or the EFPS. Those required to use EFPS or kapag voluntarily nag-enroll yung taxpayer sa EFPS, they have to file the return electronically. 
through the EFPS portal. You can find it actually in the BR website. And they have to pay the taxes due through the EFPS accredited agent banks. Ibig sabihin, kailangan pumunta muna or makipag-coordinate yung taxpayer sa mga accredited agent banks na nagpo-provide ng EFPS payments and the taxpayer must enroll their account. The following are the accredited agent banks na pwedeng mag-enroll for EFPS payment. Ibig sabihin, you have to open and maintain an account with these accredited agent banks to pay your taxes. Pero hindi na kailangan specifically sa RDO kung saan nakaregister yung taxpayer. Kasi pag nagbayad through EFPS, walang wrong venue as long as through accredited EFPS accredited agent banks. And the following are the EFPS accredited agent banks. We have the Bank of Commerce, Bank of the Philippine Islands, China Banking Corporation, Citibank, CTBC Bank or formerly the China Trust Bank, the Deutsche Bank, Development Bank of the Philippines, East West Banking Corporation. We also have Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation or HSBC, Land Bank of the Philippines. Metropolitan Bank and Trust Company or the Metro Bank. We have MUFG Bank or formerly Bank of Tokyo Mitsubishi UFJ Limited. We also have Philippine Bank of Communications, Philippine National Bank, Philippine Veterans Bank, Philippine Trust Company or Field Trust Bank, and also the Rizal Commercial Banking Corporation or RCBC, Security Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, Union Bank of the Philippines, and United Coconut Planters Bank. And who are the taxpayers required to use Electronic Filing and Payment System or the EFPS? These are the following taxpayers. Number one is yung mga taxpayer under Taxpayer Account Management Program or the TAMP. But what is TAMP? This is actually a program of the BIR para regularly monitor yung tax compliances ng mga taxpayers. A specific revenue officer will check yung monthly tax payments ng taxpayers and kapag may nakitang deviation sa compliances nila, they will be notified by the assigned revenue officer. Pero hindi siya actually audit. They will only ask the taxpayer of the reason for such deviation. We also have the accredited importer and prospective importer, national government agencies or the NGAs, all licensed local contractors, Enterprises enjoying fiscal incentives such as PESA, BOI, and various zone authorities. So it means all PESA registered entities should use EFPS whether they are enjoying income tax holiday or they are subject to the preferential rate of 5%. They have to use EFPS. We also have the top 5,000 individual taxpayers. Pero some will ask, ano ba yung top 5,000 individual taxpayers? These are actually taxpayers notified by the RDO that they are the top taxpayers since they are considered to have bigger contributions or tax payments sa district nila or area nila. And we also have corporations with paid up capital stock of 10 million pesos and above. So it means you have to check also if the actual paid up capital ng corporation is 10 million pesos and above. Take note that iba ang paid up capital sa authorized capital stock. We also have corporations with complete computerized accounting system or CAS. Take note that the BIR has already streamlined your application for a computerized accounting system. We will also have a separate video for that discussing yung computerized accounting system application. Also, government offices in so far as remittance of withheld VAT and business tax is concerned should use EFPS. Government leaders, of course, are also required to use EFPS. Also required ang insurance companies and stockbrokers. We know that madami ang transaction ng mga stockbrokers. We also have the large taxpayers and top 20,000 private corporations. Take note, the BIR has policies in classifying a taxpayer, whether large taxpayer or top 20,000 corporation. They also have, of course, policies on delisting those top taxpayers. However, paano yung taxpayers mentioned if they are not enrolled in EFPS and hindi pa din enrolled sa mga accredited agent banks? Well, what they have to do is they have to use the EBIR forms for e-filing and payment of taxes through any payment facilities for EBIR forms. 
Also remember that in case may mga bagong returns na hindi pa available sa EFPS facility dahil nire-refine pa pero available na sa EBIR forms, the EFPS taxpayers shall file the returns through EBIR forms and again, pay the taxes through any payment facilities for EBIR forms. But for taxpayers na hindi required to file electronically either through EBIR forms or the EFPS, in short, sila yung mga taxpayers na hindi nabanggit earlier, they are required to use the electronic or computer-generated returns or photocopied returns in its original format and in folio or legal size bond paper ang gagamitin in filing their tax returns. They can download sa website yung mga available forms. They need also to completely and accurately accomplish the BIR returns. Otherwise, they shall be subjected to penalty under Section 250 of the Tax Code. And their payment of taxes can be done through the following. First is over-the-counter through accredited agent banks under the jurisdiction of the RDO where the taxpayer is registered. Also, they can go directly to their registered BIR RDO and pay to the revenue collection officer sa area where there are no accredited agent banks. Also, as the taxpayer pays directly to the revenue collection officer ng RDO, they can actually pay in cash, but it should not exceed 20,000 pesos per tax return. Pero if payment is done through check, walang limit sa amount of tax to be paid per return. And what are the acceptable checks in paying taxes? These are the acceptable checks. First is manager's check or cashier's check. Second is checks drawn against a joint or multiple account for the purpose of tax payment of the personal tax liability of any members thereof provided that the name and team of the paying taxpayer shall be indicated on the back or face of the check. Also, we have checks drawn against personal account of the owner of a single proprietorship in payment of the tax liability of his or her business. So, yung mga sole proprietor, pwedeng magbayad through check. Also, checks drawn against the account of a single proprietorship in payment of tax liability of the owner provided that the name and team of the owner are indicated at the face and or back of the check. Also, checks issued by either of the spouses to pay their income tax liabilities. So these are the modes of paying taxes through checks. And kapag nag-issue ng check, what should be indicated sa check? Eh? Remember, you have to be specific sa payee's name. If you commit an error, baka hindi makredit sa inyo yung tax payment. So you have to indicate sa space after ng pay to the order, the following. First is name of the presenting or collecting bank or the bank where the payment is to be coursed and followed by the for the account of or FAO, Bureau of Internal Revenue. So here is an example of what you have to indicate on the check to be paid to the BIR. You have to indicate the name of the bank and branch, then FAO of the BIR. You have to completely indicate Bureau of Internal Revenue. Hindi pwedeng BIR lang. Kasi merong personal or tao na may account name na BIR, doon pwede pumasok yung payment instead of directly sa Bureau of Internal Revenue. As the taxpayer naman pays through manager's check, the following are the required information to be indicated on the check. First is the presenting collecting bank or the bank where the payment is to be coursed followed by FAO over the account of Bureau of Internal Revenue as payee and under the account name, the taxpayer's name and the tax identification number. So here is an example of what you have to indicate on the manager's check to be paid to the BIR. You indicate the name of the bank, then FAO of the Bureau of Internal Revenue, and then IFO or in favor of name of the taxpayer and the specific team. Again, you have to completely indicate the Bureau of Internal Revenue. But for taxpayers na hindi required to file electronically through EBIR forms or the EFPS, the BIR is encouraging them to electronically file the returns through the EBIR forms facility and pay the taxes due for EBIR form users. I would suggest use this facility kasi mas convenient na gamitin. Let us now proceed naman sa submission of the attachments to tax returns. 
Sa mga taxpayers na EBIR form users or EFPS users pero not required to attach documents such as financial statements or withholding tax certificates, hindi na kailangan na mag-submit ng printed copy of e-filed tax return sa BIR. Most of the time nga, actually, ito yung mga no operations. However, in case said taxpayer has to submit documents to other government agency requiring duly stamped ITR, the taxpayer has to submit it to the BIR for stamping. Let us now proceed naman to taxpayers who are required to submit tax returns with attachments. As provided by the rules, if a taxpayer is required to submit attachments with their tax returns tulad ng summary alpha list of withholding agents of income payments subject to withholding tax or in short, South, na kailangan i-attach sa mga income tax returns tulad ng BIR Form 1701, 1701A, 1701Q, 1702Q, 1702RT, and 1702MX, they have to submit it through e-submission at bir.gov.ph. Even actually sa quarterly alphabetical list of pays na required for BIR Form number 1601EQ and 1601FQ, the taxpayer has to submit it through e-submission at bir.gov.ph. Pati yung sa monthly submission ng alpha list of payees required under BIR form number 1600 and summary list of sales, purchases, or importation for all VAT taxpayers required under BIR form number 2550Q, they have to submit it through e-submission at bir.gov.ph. In case naman sa submission ng attachments sa annual or quarterly income tax returns that is duly filed electronically, remember, the BIR has given taxpayers to file it through the Electronic Audited Financial or EAFS system. Ibig sabihin nun, yung mga claim tax credit certificate such as 2307 ay hindi na i-attach pa yun physically sa quarterly income tax returns. But you can file it electronically through EAFS. As you can see, the BIR is trying to improve the way taxpayers comply. We just have to adopt the use of technology. And for taxpayers naman na non-EFPS users na walang babayaran na tax, which is what we call no payment returns, they are required to file electronically through eBIR forms. Remember, I mentioned before na kahit no payment dati, you still have to go to the BIR and file it personally. Sayang yung time, transportation expense, paper, na yun, you can file it online. However, remember na kapag nag-file ka na ng isang no payment return through eBIR forms, it will be continuous na sa paggamit ng eBIR forms kahit with payment. But the BIR has considered and allowed certain individuals to file yung no payment returns manually. And hindi nila kailangan mag-file through eBIR forms. And these are the following individuals. First and foremost, of course, the senior citizens and persons with disabilities. We have to consider your existing law benefiting them. Also, pwede mag-file manually ng no payment return yung mga employees deriving purely compensation income from two or more employers concurrently or successively at any time during the taxable year. Also, employees with single employer na kahit tama yung withholding tax ng employer nila pero yung spouse is not entitled to substituted filing may file manually. Take note that spouses are generally required to file their consolidated ITRs kasi they are considered as just one unit. Pero pwede din naman actually separate filing. And lastly, pwede mag-manual filing yung mga employees na qualified for substituted filing. Kasi kapag covered yung employee ng substituted filing, wala na siyang obligation to file the tax return. Because it is the employer who is required to withhold the correct amount of tax on compensation, magfa-file ng alpha list of employees, at prepare ng BIR Form 2316. Pero if the employee needs an ITR for promotion, loans, scholarships, foreign travel requirements, they can file manually a no-payment income tax return. Ano ba yung magiging consequence naman kapag yung taxpayer ay nag-file ng tax returns manually pero they are required to file using the electronic method? The taxpayer will be penalized for wrong venue and subject to 25% surcharge of the tax due. This is an additional amount due sa tax na dapat bayaran. Pero in case hindi available yung EFPS, let us say down yung system and the BIR has issued an advisory regarding such status. What the taxpayer should do is to file through 
EBIR forms and pay the tax due through the methods mentioned earlier regarding EBIR forms. Pero paano naman kung parehong EFPS and EBIR forms are not available and the BIR has already released an advisory regarding the status ng system nila? The remedy is to file manually and pay through the allowed methods. Remember that you have to wait the required advisory before you file manually. But this usually happens kapag malapit na yung deadline and taxpayers try to flood yung system ni BIR on the last days before the deadline. That is why we have to file and pay the taxes earlier. Remember, what is important for tax compliance is for you to pay the correct amount of tax with the correct form, correct mode of filing, correct mode of payment, and it must have attachments if required. Kasi kapag di ka nag-comply with any of the requirements of the BIR, there's a possibility na ipepenalize ka despite filing of the tax returns and payment of taxes. We should always follow the rules. So, that covers our discussion about guidelines in the filing of tax returns, including attachments and payment of taxes. I hope you learned a lot from our discussion. If you have further questions or clarifications regarding the filing of the tax return, you can contact us and we will be glad to assist you regarding your concern. Thank you very much. This is Attorney Arnold A. Abdua, CPA. I hope to see you in our next videos. Keep safe and God bless.